Maayong hapon. Attending classes with an empty stomach and working until 12 midnight to earn for a living? This was me for three straight years while in college. I didn't have an easy life. I come from a poor family. But the only thing that kept me going was the power of education to change my life. And this was what my parents instilled in me since I was young. Determined, I finished college with flying colors. Class valedictorian, magna cum laude, and even one of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. I'm proud. My family was proud. My parents told me, you'll finally find a good job and change your and your family's life. However, weeks after my graduation, I still couldn't find a job. I was desperate. I was embarrassed despite my accolades. I couldn't earn to feed my family. But weeks after, an organization hired me as their teacher for children with disabilities coming from poor families. I didn't like the job as I didn't understand the importance of why we need to educate these children. But I had to take it. I had to earn. I had to feed my family. But as I continued working with children with disabilities, I learned how to love what I was doing. I came to understand that the inclusion of children with disabilities is one of the greatest diversity challenge of our time. I came to believe what Cardinal Roger Malhoney said, that any society is judged on the basis of how it treats its weakest members, the last, the least, the littlest. The whole experience made me empowered and made me realize the people who are at the margins of the society. I felt that feeling of fulfillment and happiness. But three years after I graduated, nothing significant had changed with my family's economic situation. The house had no electricity because my parents couldn't pay the bills. I felt that I had failed my parents, especially when they said, Rolando, we're happy and we know that you're happy with what you're doing, but fulfillment doesn't pay the bills. That moment was a game changer. I was at a crossroad. Should I look for good paying jobs or should I continue working with children with disabilities? I have to admit that I was tempted to agree with my parents, but I didn't. I decided to keep on working with children with disabilities and their families at the grassroots and political level. Here's what I did. I took another job. Right after my community work, I'd go straight to the university from 6 p.m. until 12 midnight to work. I also managed to do paid workshops and lectures on weekends. But I felt physically exhausted. But I was fulfilled. I was able to send my younger sisters to school. I was able to provide livelihood program for my parents for them to have sustainable income. Up to these days, I continue supporting them in parallel with what I work in the disability sector, this time working as a youth ambassador to the United Nations. I know how challenging it is to choose to pursue one's passion and one's economic stability. But how an individual deals with this dilemma is a matter of choice. If one chooses to try to do both requires real strategy. What about using weekends or evenings to earn money in other ways? I am aware that this sounds exhausting, but that's how it works. Building an inclusive and more fair world is never an easy job. Whether you're working on disability issues like me, refugee integration, or gender empowerment, working for social change 
requires taking risks, making tough choices, and putting a lot of hard work. But none of us has or will ever stop me. By being strategic and working really hard, I continue to support my family and to advance the cause I care about. For now, for me, I'm happy and grateful to say, ladies and gentlemen, that fulfillment really does pay the bills. And I believe that it can for you too. Dagang salamat.